Okay, hello everybody. This is the Circuit Python weekly meeting for October 12th, 2021. Uh, this meeting is on Tuesday instead of the usual Monday because it's a Monday holiday in the United States. It was a Monday holiday yesterday. Um, but this, we get together once a week, usually on Monday and occasionally on Tuesday to talk about all things that are Circuit Python. I'm Dan, I'm one of the core developers of Circuit Python and I work for Adafruit. CircuitPython is a version of Python that's designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. So if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord, all lowercase. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and in the CircuitPython voice channel. As I mentioned, this meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Pacific US time, except when it overlaps with the US holiday. So we usually move it to Tuesday. If the meeting time is changed, we'll notify you via Discord. If you want to be notified about changes to the meeting time, we can add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. Just ask us. There's also a calendar available, a Google calendar available that we try to keep updated if you'd like to subscribe to that. This meeting is recorded. We record audio from the voice channel and video of the text channel and Discord. If you'd rather not have your voice recorded, you are still welcome to participate via text. The video of this meeting will be posted to YouTube and the audio is released as a podcast. If you find that this podcast is not available on your favorite podcast service, please let us know. There is a notes doc to accompany the meeting and recording. If you wish to participate, but you can't make it to the meeting, you can leave hug reports and status updates for us in the document and we'll read them off during the meeting. The notes document also contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meetings tend to run 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. A link to the notes document is posted to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord every week. Check the pinned messages at the top of that channel to find the latest notes doc. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. The second part of the meeting is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from what we're all up to in terms of, so it's like it's quantitative rather than qualitative. The third part is hug reports. Hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. So just add something to in the weeds if you want to have us bring that up at the end. And that's how we'll run the meeting. So now we'll start with community news. And I'll go over a few of the top headline items from the latest Circuit Python, uh, Python on Microcontrollers newsletter, which actually came out already because it's Tuesday. Or did it? I think it did, yeah. Um, so uh, the top headline is that Python becomes the number one programming language via the TIOBE survey. For the first time in more than 20 years, the Tyobi Programming Language Index has a new leader of the pack, the Python programming language. The long-standing hegemony of Java and C is over. Python, which started as a simple scripting language as an alternative to Perl, has become mature. Its ease of learning, its huge amount of libraries, and its widespread use in all kinds of domains has made it the most popular programming language of today. Congratulations to Guido Van Rossum and the many contributors to the Python ecosystem. Our second item is that uh, the Mu editor, which is a beginner's editor for um, people using Python, especially on Python or microcontrollers, 
the beta 1.1.0 beta 6 version of that is out with multi-language support. Um, thank you who's ever taking timestamps because I'm trying to do so many things at once. Um, go and look uh, at codewith.mu and uh, take a, and you'll be able to download the latest version, which is available for a variety of platforms. Um, another milestone we've reached is that there are now over 3,000 closed pro requests in, in the CircuitPython core. There have been over 3,000 closed uh, pull requests in CircuitPython that shows how much activity we've been doing. There are a few pull requests in there that were not merged in and were just closed because uh, they were replaced or just, we decided not to merge, but the vast majority of those are, are regular pull requests that reflect contributions. From CircuitPython's humble beginnings to CircuitPython 7.0, this open source project keeps getting better and better. Next headline is that our stage, the stage game library for CircuitPython is ported to the Pi Moroni Pico system. With the help of Gadgetoid at Pi Moroni, Deshipu, who joins us frequently in, in Discord, has ported the CircuitPython stage game library to, Pi, to the Pi Moroni Pico system which is a Raspberry Pi Pico-based gaming device. Both vacuum invaders and jumper wire work fine. This is terrific. It means that lots of games will be able to run on even more platforms. Uh, one more headline. Guido Van Rossum has, talks about speeding up uh, Python, that is C Python, not MicroPython or CircuitPython. The software at scale podcast number 34 presents faster Python with Guido Van Rossum. The podcast discusses Guido's new work on making CPython faster. You can look that up in the PEP 659. Tiers of Python interpreter execution and high impact, low hanging fruit performance improvements. And finally, um, if you'd like a poster of CircuitPython 7, you can get one in the Adafruit store. Uh, this is a limited edition poster. We didn't print as many as usual because of uh, issues with getting it printed but feel free to get one. It comes in a tube, so it's got no creases. All right. If you'd like to contribute to this, uh, to the weekly newsletter, um, the Python or Microcontrollers newsletter, uh, you can uh, add things to, there's uh, in notes doc, you'll see a pointer to a GitHub repository where you can um, submit pull requests for things to add. You can also send mail to cpnews at adafruit.com and you can tag us with hash CircuitPython on Twitter. Any of those ways are, get, are ways to get things of interest into the newsletter. The newsletter is really interesting. It has a lot of links to things, a lot of pictures, and you'll find out a lot of things that you hadn't heard about. All right, let's go on to the state of CircuitPython, the CircuitPython libraries and Blinka. Uh, overall in the past week, and it's a week plus one day, I think. Um, we have we had 38 pull requests merged across all repositories with 21 authors and 13 reviewers. 20 issues were closed by nine people and 18 new issues were opened by 14 people. And we've assigned the Hacktoberfest label 301 issues. So we could, uh, if you're new to um, working on CircuitPython, take a look at those issues with those labels because they're especially good for uh, new people to work on. In the CircuitPython core, that's the firmware for CircuitPython itself. Ah, Katni says, uh, don't try not, don't use the Oktoberfest la uh, labeling. Instead, search for the good first issue label. Um, so I'll go back to the core. In the core, um, uh, the core CircuitPython firmware, we had 23 pull requests merged with 12 authors and six reviewers of those pull requests. There are now five open pull requests. There are a few that have been open for a while, but mostly I think because they're drafts, and then the rest are pretty short range and are still being worked on actively. There were 11 closed issues by four people and seven open issues by seven people. And um, we assigned the Hacktoberfest label to 20 issues and look for those if you want to work on something. Oh, I guess that's not true. So, but see, look for a good first issue. We have 434 open issues. A lot of those are long-term. We have 15 open issues. Uh, 
to work on for 7XX releases, five issues that we've deferred to 800, probably because um, they reflect uh, changes that we can't make in 700 for backward compatibility reasons. There are 17 open issues in the library. There are 392 long-term issues, and there are five issues which seem to be sort of four issues. And all the issues have been assigned a milestone for right now. All right, Katni, could you go ahead and do the libraries if you're available? I am. All right, so this section applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, uh, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few um, extras, such as uh, the community bundle and our cookie cutter. So over all of those repos, we had 12 pull requests merged by nine different authors and eight different reviewers. The oldest of those was 52 days old, so it was good to see um, another older pull request get merged and everything else was uh, either zero through about four days, um, leaving us with 59 open pull requests. Uh, we had seven issues closed by five people and 10 open by eight people, leaving us with 628 open issues. <clears throat> 283 of those are good first issues. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the, sorry, on the Python side of things, uh, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including open pull requests and open issues. Um, you can search those issues by label. There's a drop down. And if you're new to everything, check out good first issue. We created a large number of those uh, in anticipation of Hacktoberfest, but it's something that we've been looking to do for quite a while is to actually have a well-curated list of good first issues for new folks. Um, read the instructions in the in the huge number of them that we created. They're, they're well-defined, and um, there are two of us that you can tag on those for help, and we can get you in touch with our uh, whole review team, which w will enable all of us to be able to assist you with those. There is a guide in the Adafruit Learn system uh, on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. It is um, a great thing if you are new to Git and GitHub and you want to contribute. Um, and once again, we're always available on Discord to help you. Um, in terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had one new library, Adafruit CircuitPython OV5640, and a number of updated libraries which I will not read off. Um, overall, we are currently um, seeing a slight influx of new folks, uh, presumably from Hacktoberfest, a uh, bunch of people picking up our new good first issues, which is excellent. That is the whole reason we put them in there was so that folks could pick them up. Um, and thank you to everyone who has been stepping up to review those uh, PRs, because obviously, um, we're not doing the whole process if we're not also reviewing them. So thank you so much uh, for that. And that's where we are with the libraries. OK, thank you, Katni. OK, um, the next section is Blinka. Um, Melissa is not in the chat right now. So I think that Scott said he would read uh, the Blinka section. Yeah, thank you. OK, so for Blinka, Blinka is the, a circuit Python API compatibility layer for single board computers like the Raspberry Pi and MicroPython. Uh, so here's the stats for Blinka. We had three pull requests merged from two different authors. So thank you to those authors. We had four reviewers. Uh, so thank you to all those reviewers. We have six open pull requests. Uh, four of them from the Blinka library, one from Blinka BLEIO, and one from Platform Detect. Uh, the oldest is 244 days old. Issues wise, uh, we had two closed issues by two people and one open by one person, so we're net down one, for a total of 64 open issues. And that, that may just be on Adafruit Blinka. I'm not sure it's aggregated. Uh, in terms of downloads, we had, uh, according to Pi Wheels, we had one uh, 11,432 downloads of Blinka uh, in the last month, and we've we now support 76 different boards. Okay, thank you, Scott. Thank okay, you. our next section is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. As mentioned, this section is held as a round robin, or I didn't mention that, but normally we mention it. And uh, where we'll start, we'll go down the list alphabetically and circle around to the top to give everyone a chance to participate. 
If you're text only in the chat or you're missing the meeting, uh, you can add your HUD reports to the note document and they'll get read off. Um, because I'm near the top, I will just start at the top so we don't have to reorder this. So I'll note that Charles Berniford is lurking and gives a group, group hug. And then I'll give my hug report. Uh, thanks incredibly to Katni, um, Jeff, and Scott for introducing me to running the meeting, which I haven't done before. Uh, Katni has helped me out uh, in a bunch of ways, including several uh, trial recordings for me to try to get the recording software to make sure it works right and that the sound is and muting and non-muting is working right. Thanks to Jeff who uh, worked on the um, running the the meeting document. I think that's right. That he he worked on a lot of that, but we've all contributed to it. And thanks to Scott for initiating the whole meeting thing and setting the protocol of how the meeting runs which is uh, a, a, an excellent example of how to run a community meeting. And now we'll go on to David Gloud, who's lurking, so I'll read his. Um, thanks to Dan H. for running the meeting. Thanks to Bbox OS for four times in a row with a project in the newsletter and a group hub. Too many people to thank since my last contribution to the meeting, quote unquote. All right. Uh, Foamy guys up next. Go ahead. All right. Thanks, Dan. Um, this week, hugs are going out to Mark Gambler for helping review all of the uh, type info PRs that we made for Hectoberfest. To Jeff and Microdev, who both uh, reviewed and offered up some good improvements to a PR that I put into the core to fix an issue that I found with displays uh, when you initialize them. And then uh, lastly, to Neerdoc and Toddbot, both of whom helped me uh, figure out how to get to safe mode on Raspberry Pi Pico and showed various ways to attach a, uh, a reset button to make it easier. So thanks to all those folks. Okay, thank you. Probably Guy. Uh, Jeff is up next. Hi. Uh, first, I want to start off with a group hug. And then I want to thank Lady Ada. We've been having a chance to work directly together on the OV5640 camera stuff. And that's always nice, even if my code is not always up to snuff on the first run. Dan, thank you very much for running the meeting. And uh, Kmatch98 and David Gloud and um, let's see, I guess I noticed Kinger North was listening in. It's nice to see some people who aren't here as regularly and it's nice when you join us. It's nice when you feel like you can take a break and we're always happy uh, to hear what you've been up to. So yeah, that's what I got for you this week. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff. Okay, Katni, go ahead. All right, so first up, thank you, Dan, for running the meeting for the first time. Uh, next up, a hug report to Foamy Guy for reviewing a PR on the Learn Repo for a community contributed update to one of his examples. To uh, user Hem on Discord for jumping into the community helpers role and providing a ton of assistance to folks on Discord. Uh, they were pretty much already doing that. Um, perfect addition to the community helpers, um, and they've continued. Uh, as, as much as they were before. So that's been excellent to see. Um, to Foamy Guy and Mark Gambler for reviewing the incoming PRs from new folks on the type hints stuff. Um, really appreciate that. Uh, we obviously, in deciding to participate in Hacktoberfest, created more work for ourselves. And it's been really nice to see that just being taken care of. Um, so thank you very much there. To uh, Jeff and Carter, for helping me understand the AT Tiny um, 817 breakout. It's a confusing little board. Um, I will explain more later, but uh, they were kind enough to um, talk through talk it through with me so I have a little bit better understanding of it. I'm writing the guide for it, so that's useful. Um, and more so to Carter, again, for helping me test the code for it. Um, CircuitPython didn't have support at the time, and so uh, we were working through that, and Carter helped me test that. And finally, a group hug. Okay, thank you, Katni. Okay, uh, Kmatch is text only, so I'll read his contribution. Uh, Cedar Grove, thanks for the espresso wing scale GUI on a Pi, pi portal. Uh, any interest in turning your code chunks into a reusable CircuitPython widget? And there's a pointer to um, the display I.O. layout um, repo. So take a look at that if you like. Okay, next is Maker Melissa. 
Hello. Um, so I wanted to give a head report to Scott for clarifying some things about the BLE file transfer library because it made finishing it up much faster. Uh, to you, Dan, for running the meeting and to group hug and everyone else. All right. Thank it. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, Scott. Hello. Um, so two hugs for me, although I think I missed one. Uh, hug report to Emerge Reanimator for the NXP PR for a couple of their chips uh, that we're working through. And a hug report to Foamy Guy for doing the type edition reviews. And I think I missed Mark on this as well, according to other folks. So thank you to everybody who's doing reviews as always. Um, the type in stuff is going to be really neat. Okay, thank you, Scott. Okay, that's it for hug reports. We'll move on to status updates. Status updates is our time for syncing up what we're, on what we're doing. Uh, this section is also around Robin. I'll go through alphabetically. I happen to be at the top, so we don't have to wrap around. Uh, if we end up uh, getting into a discussion during status updates, we can move anything extended to in the weeds. All right, so uh, this week I spent a while trying to get boot keyboard support working in CircuitPython uh, for HID. That's uh, a special kind of HID where um, the device, the host, uh, doesn't have a lot of code space, and so it doesn't uh, have the oomph to um, understand arbitrary, say, keyboard or mouse uh, descriptions. So instead, uh, the device says, I could be a boot keyboard, and the host says, sure, be, go ahead and be a boot keyboard. And the, what, how the keyboard works is predefined, so they both agree in advance on how it works. Um, so this is good for BIOSes and uh, older Macs, uh, their boot um, startups and things like that. And we tried to get this to work, and it sort of works, but there are a bunch of conflicts between um, what these biases expect and support and what we can provide because we're providing so many other HID devices as well. And it turned out there was a conflict in numbering, and um, HotTech helped me figure this out uh, in terms of the USB stuff. So we're going to put the boot keyboard support on hold for now, because especially because it conflicts with the Windows 7 and 8.1 drivers, which need to number things in a different way with different numbers in order to work. So unfortunately, we'll just hold off on this. If we give up supporting Windows 7 and 8.1 uh, drivers, then we could go back to try to support boot keyboards. But we won't bother with this for now. Um, at the same time, I also added something called feature reports to HID. I haven't tested that yet, but that was much simpler, and I hope that that will work. And then in the meantime, I've also been fixing uh, various bugs for the next 7X release and uh, vetting bugs that other people have submitted. And, of course, as we mentioned, I'm running the meeting for the first time. Okay, now I'll go on to David Gloud, who's also uh, lurking, so I'll read his contribution. Um, discovered calm, in quotes, from YouTuber Titty Moby and his Discord full of French makers. I'm not sure what that is, but you can Google it. Uh, contributing to other people's projects. C. Grover's CO2 sensor. Test and discussion on the design, including UART PM25 version, and fix the French translation of C. Grover's CO2 sensor. Uh, B-Box OS, Pi Basic, and Basic Python with physical I2C keyboard. Bbox OS made Pi Basic work on the Featherwing keyboard and on the Wio terminal and Pi Portal and Pi Portal Titano with an I2C keyboard. And presented to Bbox OS my CircuitPython 2021 idea of a CircuitPython computer and Tan Newt's Basic Python. And uh, David has recently acquired a BLE CAT printer because of Jeff. That's a small um, a thermal printer that you can attach uh, uh, via BLE to various things. And the M5 stack I2C card KB keyboard because of BBox OS and a 555 timer, not even because of Lady Ada. Okay, thanks. Okay, foamy guy, are you ready? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh... Last week, I was working on um, reviewing the type PRs that have come in. We've had a, a good number of those come in, so that's been really cool to see. 
Um, I worked on a helper library for a little WaveShare Pico LCD, kind of kind of like a Featherwing, but of course it's for the Pico, so it's not really technically a Featherwing. But uh, while I was making that library, I made the mistake of uh, accidentally passing none for the um, spy bus when I initialized the display and found out that that caused a uh, kind of a hard crash in CircuitPython. So I dove into the core a little bit and figured out how to fix that. Um, and got some good pointers, uh, again, from Jeff and Microdev there, so that was nice. Um, for this week, uh, definitely still have more of the type PRs coming in. I'm sure that'll be on the plate for uh, this whole month, at the very least. Um, and then I'm trying to generalize a, a tile map game helper that I worked on a little while ago. I kind of had hard-coded some of the sizes and stuff for the um, specific sprites I was using, so I'm going back to try to make that more generally useful um, and I'm building a, a different game with different size sprites, and so that was kind of the uh, the reason why I wanted to dive into that now. Um, and that's what I got. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, Jeff, are you are you available? Hello again. Yeah. So last week I mostly worked on the OV5640 camera support, and as Katni mentioned, that's now in the bundle. But this week it looks like I'll be working more on the OV5640 camera. The basic functionality is pretty good. And after some work that I did this morning, most of the functionality works. I found a way to boost the frame rate quite a bit. So if you watched my one minute video last week with the really low frame rate, we did get it up to about 15 frames per second on the Kaluga board. Uh, then in personal stuff, there is a radio time signal transmitted from Fort Collins, Colorado by NIST. It's called WWVB. I have some little modules that uh, can log the signal. And I'm planning on putting something online that I'm going to call the WWVB Observatory. It's written on Python and runs on Raspberry Pi. And it's interesting to me because I love time. And I couldn't find anybody else who did something like that. So that's what I'm cooking up. OK, thanks very much. OK, Katni, you're up next. All right. So last week, I finished my part of the iLights LED glasses guide. Um, started the AT Tiny 8x8x7 Stem and QT Seesaw Breakout Guide and started adding support to CircuitPython for the AT Tiny 8x7 Seesaw Breakout. Uh, this week I took Monday off for Canadian Thanksgiving. Um, Highlights LED Glasses Guide was published, which I forgot to write in there. Um, working on the AT Tiny Breakout Guide, this is a fairly involved guide as there are several examples, each of which will require its own GIF. Um, so I'll be dealing with uh, that probably for most of the week. And then interspersed with that is some more pretty pins. And I said if uh, Lady Ada adds more support or support for more boards, but that uh, was just sent to me via Slack. So we now have um, support for at least the at Mega 328, um, which means we can do the basic Metro and the Metro mini boards um, with our pretty pins wiring diagrams. So I'll be doing that uh, over the course of the week as well. In other news, I picked up two YubiKey BIOS, which are standard YubiKeys, but with fingerprint sensors. They're new. Um, haven't sent them up yet, but I'm looking forward to it. They're pretty much the same size. The sensor on it is bigger than the touch sensor uh, on the previous version. Um, but you can enroll fingerprints, and it requires, obviously, fingerprints to send uh, data from it. And so it's, in theory, more secure. So anyway, looking forward to having fun with that. That's what I've got. OK, thank you, Katni. OK, Maker Melissa. Hello. Last week, I finished up the JavaScript BLE file transfer library updates. And I am going, and I continued working on the CircuitPython code editor improvements that relied on the file transfer library updates. Uh, this week, I'm going to work on finishing up the code editor updates and then uh, start testing the code editor on other devices and make adjustments as necessary. And that's it. OK, thank you. OK, and Scott, thank you, finally. Last on the list. Yeah. Sorry, I can't take time codes and unmute myself <laughs> at the same time. Uh, yes, so uh, <laughs> forgot. Um, I'm working on the Raspberry Pi, uh, not the Pico, but the regular one. Um, it is. Uh, a new class of chips, so I've been learning a, a ton about uh, the basics of interrupts and stuff like that. 
Uh, last week was mostly working on the interrupt controller uh, and how it, like one of the challenges is because it, it's designed for multi-core, so there's a peripheral there that manages like which core gets interrupted for different interrupts. So I spent a lot of time last week working on that. And uh, as of yesterday, I managed to get it actually interrupting the core, which is awesome. Um, and so I made a kind of a stub generator that allows us to do the same sort of weak interrupt handler thing that uh, that is how it is typically done with Cortex M0. So if you want to handle an interrupt, you just override like USB underscore IRQ handler, and then that gets all hooked up into the machinery that I'm auto generating. Um, and you can enable it and it'll just come to you, which is cool. So uh, the next step is actually to figure out how to get the USB actually working. Um, Cause I think it's, it's coming out of reset and I'm managing to get the interrupts for it, which is great. Um, so today I'm gonna set up my Beagle and start seeing how far, um, hopefully, hopefully some distance we're getting uh, with sending signals over USB. And I, I think there's probably some initialization stuff I've got to change too, because I'm starting with the code from the STM version of it, uh, which is going to be slightly different than what the Raspberry Pi's version is. Um, so that's what I'm looking at. Okay, thank you very much, Scott. Okay, um, that's it for uh, our status updates. Um, we don't have an into weeds section this week. The lawnmower went through or something, so there are no weeds to be uh, discussed. So uh, we'll go on to uh, wrap up the meeting. Uh, thanks to everyone who participated. This has been the Circuit Python, Circuit Python Weekly for October 12th, uh, 2021. Um, if you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python and those that work, of us that work on Circuit Python, consider purchasing things from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit in the Adafruit channel, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. The uh, meeting will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit the website adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. And the next meeting will be held next Monday instead of Tuesday, Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern U.S. time, 11 a.m. Pacific time. This meeting is, is also uh, it's held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can go to by going to adafru.it slash discord. And if you want to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the at sign circuit Pythonistas role on Discord. So thanks, everybody. Uh, we hope to see you all next week again. And thanks, everybody. We'll probably have a higher number of people next week because it will be at the regular time. And thanks, everyone, for bearing with me on my first meeting. I will stop recording now.